Oh, going to networking events for me was very uh, limiting. You know, I was the one, you know, in the little corner waiting for people to approach me because I really hated whenever I approach someone asking, you know, like, hey, introducing myself. The first thing that will come out was like, oh, I hear an accent. Where are you from? And I'll be like, ah, you didn't hear anything I just said. You got stuck in my accent, right? Yeah. That was really hard. And I worked with my business coach at the time, helping me come up with like questions. I even had like a little script at the beginning uh, on how to network better. But I think the most important change was changing the mindset. Instead of thinking that they're focused on my accent because they're not understanding me, because that was my limitation. They're not going to understand me. It was really focused on the fact that they're curious about you right? They want to know more about you. They've never met someone from, and, and it's true. I'm from Bolivia. Welcome to episode 165 of the Coming Button X is a lot about fighting your self-limitation or self-beliefs. It's about reframing them and cultivating a mindset that can support resilience and growth. That's exactly what Patricia Boran co-founder and CEO of Boral Agency has been going through. Boral Agency is a Houston-based and woman-owned marketing firm that provides integrating marketing services and promotional products for small and mid-sized businesses. In this episode, we dive into Patricia's journey, exploring a mindset shift, overcoming self-limitations, for instance, a background and Bolivian accent, the power of letting go, and the pivotal role delegation in scaling a business. What are your self-limitations and what are you doing about them, by the way? Here's a first step to find out. Take the bottleneck index, which will help you identify your hidden bottlenecks and provide you with some practical tips to overcome them. You'll find the link in the show notes. Now let's turn to Patricia. Hello, Patricia. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yes. I'm always happy to talk to, uh, to entrepreneurs, especially especially female entrepreneurs, because you your guys are hiding. <laughs> <laughs> so your entrepreneurial uh, journey started in uh, 2011, if I am correct. And, you know, I believe the, the biggest risk entrepreneurs face is themselves. And this is where I would like to begin our conversation with you because I want to understand how your personal life has impacted impacted your entrepreneurial journey. That's a great question, Lauren. And a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So I'll start from the beginning. So yeah. when I started my company, it's not my first time running a business. So I already own companies in the past. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I lost my mom. So I started running her business when I was little. Uh, my dad was never really in the picture. So I learned a lot of uh, those entrepreneurial skills very early on, but making a lot of mistakes, right? Yeah. So when I started this company, there was a lot of things that off the ground it started really well, right? Signing an operating agreement, uh, establishing the company, everything good from the run. Because I started the company with my sister. Mm. But over the years, you know, she had babies. I was married, I went through divorce, and on top of all of that, your own personal limitations, because as you can hear, I have an accent, I'm originally from Bolivia, I migrated to Houston, Texas, so those limitations in my head of, oh, I have an accent, not only that, you know, I work a lot in the manufacturing field, like a lot of uh, my clients are manufacturing companies, and you know, I always felt a little bit also behind because, you know, you are a woman going into these networking groups where literally 99% were men and maybe I will find two or three women, you know? So all of those self-limitations holding me back. But on the personal side, like the changes happening in my life, I right? like going to boards is very difficult and a lot of business owners don't mitigate that type of risk on what to do when somebody's going through something difficult. I also, uh, you know, after my divorce, I lost my father. So going through that as well and some other like family issues. So it's like a lot of things that we don't think of that affects the business because at the end of the day, how our mindset is working is how our business is going to be working. Yeah. 
I, I love it. It's like this is this is so true. We are, all, you know, you are your business. You know, there's no there's no difference between you and your business. And you know, being the bottleneck is a lot about what you call uh, self imitations, right? Uh, for instance, the biggest the biggest bottlenecks, which is also your case because you you you, you took the bottleneck index, and it's always about delegation and letting go, and that starts in your head all the time. That's why I'm saying the biggest risk you know entrepreneurs face is is themselves. Now, in your case, can you take us through some of your limitations, and then also tell us how you have been able to overcome them, if you have been able to overcome them at all. <laughs> I think I have many, I've overcome many ones, but of course not a hundred percent, right? Yeah. So at the beginning, it was really hard to delegate because of course the first thing you think is nobody's going to do it the way I do it. Yes. Right. Especially when your service, when you are offering a service and your customers are hiring you and during the meeting, they're expecting you. It's very hard to delegate because how do you put that, you know, knowledge into another person? So it really is about trusting, but also hiring the right employees within your organization and being, you know, realistic, cutting the BS, honestly, like being very truthful with yourself on what are the things that uh, you feel comfortable delegating and start there. Right. So for me at the beginning, a lot of the delegations, I didn't have any problems delegating like the work itself. Like, for example, we do web design, right? So mm -hmm. I will design the concept and then I can delegate the development to my team. So I had no problem doing that, uh, creating the strategy and delegating, you know, the execution to my team. And now I'm happy to say that I also have a great team where I can even delegate the strategy. But it didn't happen right away. I kind of went through phases. And yeah. every time it was a little bit painful because, you know, you delegate and you're not going to do it right the first time, right? And mm. the first instinct is to like, ah, I'm taking it back and I'm going to do it all over again. I knew this was going to happen, you know, instead of, oh, wait, where was your bottleneck? <laughs> I think I'm going to help you overcome that. And creating those systems and creating those processes. And for us really in 2016 is when we decided to hire a business coach who helped us a lot at creating those systems, creating those processes. So we've had help along the way. <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm happy to hear your, you use that business coach. See, we, mm -hmm. we are useful. <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell us more about those uh, other uh, self limitations. Like, this one about your accent. This is the first time that I hear. I hear that. Was that was that a big issue? And how how did it impact you? How did you overcome it? Well, for me, I mean, I feel like it never really stopped me from doing things, but it did make me self conscious, and perhaps I wasn't able to have as much reach, right? Yeah. So I always want to educate people on marketing. That's one of the biggest reasons I started my agency because a lot of when I started my company. I was focused only on branding products, branding products and graphic design. That was going to be it. But when I was looking for agencies for my own company, I saw that a lot of agencies are out there to just close the sale and kind of like good luck, right? So that's why I shifted my company to really educate the, the people on, you know, what's the right agency for you? And a lot of times you don't need everything that at once, right? Like you don't need to have the website, the, the social media, the blah, 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 like everything running at mm. the same right way when you have a limited budget and you need to first grow to this stage. So a good agency will take you from, you know, grab you on the hand and kind of like take those first steps with the services that you need for that first step. So my limitation was how can I educate and bring this out more, right? So now I give a lot of speaking engagements. I post a video every Wednesday uh, educating about marketing. And at first I was like making those videos and mm, no, I cannot post this. And I would just keep it, you know. So it took me, it took a lot of courage for me to be like, you know what? Don't care about that. Let's just post it. And, you know, let's put like the, the letters at the bottom. So if they don't understand it, they'll, they can read it anyway. <laughs> you know, the captions. Uh, so I did it like that. 
but also going to networking events for me was very uh, limiting. You know, I was the one, you know, in the little corner waiting for people to approach me because I really hated whenever I approached someone asking, you know, like, hey, introducing myself. The first thing that will come out was like, oh, I hear an accent. Where are you from? And I'll be like, ah, you didn't hear anything I just said. You got stuck in my accent, right? Yeah. So that was really hard. And I worked with my business coach at the time, uh, helping me come up with like questions. I even had like a little script at the beginning uh, on how to network better. But I think the most important change was changing the mindset. Mm. Instead of thinking that they're focused on my accent because they're not understanding me, because that was my limitation. They're not going to understand me. It was really focused on the fact that they're curious about you, right? They want to know more about you. They've never met someone from, and, and it's true. I'm from Bolivia. And I always get like, oh my God, you're the first person I've met from Bolivia. And everybody gets excited about that. So changing that, shifting that mm -hmm. mindset. The perspective they helped me a lot. Abs absolutely, it's it's funny you say that because I have an accent too. I'm French, <laughs> but, but I, for me it was never it was never a, a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I, I use it sometimes when people don't understand what I'm saying, and I'll, I'm like, excuse my French, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but my self limitation is more in like I have difficulties to express myself. I wish I was like these these speakers that you see. You know, they can express ideas so beautifully the words come out so smoothly yeah. and for me finding the right words I've, I've, it's always been really really difficult like you said it, it's very much a mindset so i force myself to go to a networking event to be on a podcast to be a host on on podcast so that i really have to find uh you know the right words i i need to to slow down my pace when I talk so that the words will, will yeah. I have more time to find the right words like I'm trying to do right now because I'm trying to express my, to express my ID. But it's really about, yeah, it's really about like, yeah, forcing myself. Like I must, I must do it. Otherwise I will never overcome it. You know, and it will always be in my face and I will always feel bad about it. And I would never do anything about it. Yeah, that, that's true. And, and I used to, I used to go to events, sometimes four events a week, just to literally practice. Mm -hmm. just put yourself out there yeah. if, if, if it, it was not like I would go to networking events that were not necessarily related to my business just so I because sometimes I couldn't find one right so I would be like yeah. okay I'll go to this meetup group or whatever just to literally put myself out there and, and practice like you said you know you just have to do it yeah abso absolutely practice practice rehearsing is a, is a great great tip um, one more one more self limitation you had or you still, you know, you're working on it. because it's a. Let's be honest, it's a, it's a lifelong journey. <laughs> yeah. I think one of my uh, current like limitations that I'm working on right now is uh, scaling my business mm -hmm. and finding the right business model. And I had a really uh, a huge breakthrough like two weeks ago. Right now, marketing changes constantly, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, with AI. The change that's coming to the marketing realm is huge. And we keep getting stuck in this vision, right? And that's how I was, right? I was very stuck on the vision of, no, this is kind of how it should be. And that's where I want to go. And this is a timeline that I have. And, and kind of like uh, an older model. So I was getting too attached to the past. So I think my limiting belief was like, you know, to let go of that and, and really it's okay to change your goals. Right? Because in my head, I was like, no, I have this goal. And if I don't accomplish that goal, then I'm a failure. Right? Mm -hmm. No, that's still your goal. But this plan that you had, you know, is what it needs to change. So there's not only one way that takes you to your goal. There's multiple ways. And right now we're actually going through a whole new strategy. We're implementing and shifting our business model, you know, to really take on the strategy. I mean, the the technology that's available out there and yeah. be on, on that, you know, forefront of technology for marketing, which is great because obviously my clients are enjoying the benefits, are ripping the benefits. And we are able to be, we're able to be the ones talking about technology and AI without any 
concerns that, oh my God, it's going to take my job, right? Because that's not the reality. So, so great, great uh, transition to my next, to my next question then. What's your state on AI? AI is like your new assistant. The way I like to think of it is like, let's go back in time when computers didn't exist, right? And people had to do everything manually. When computers were implemented, everybody was freaking out. Oh my God, my job is going to disappear. What am I going to do with my life? And those that resist the change disappear. Mm. Those that embrace the change, learned a new technology, and were able to actually grow even more. Because that's what technology does. It helps you grow more because now you don't have to waste so much time doing these tasks because the technology is helping you to do it faster. Like in our case, there's a lot of things that we can automate with technology and optimize where we're overseeing. So instead of handling, you know, five accounts, now I can handle more accounts, but yeah. everybody can get the same level of service and even get better results because at the end of the day, the human eye can make mistakes or cannot catch all mistakes where AI can help you catch other type of mistakes. You know, think about Netflix, when Netflix and what happened with Blockbuster and, you know, all of that. It, they they hold themselves to the change to 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 the past and they resist change, and when that happens, then I think you disappear. Right? If you stop, what is it? If you stop growing, you start dying. Yes, I, I have that like like written down here on top of my computer. <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice one. I I live in Finland, you know, the home of Nokia. Can you believe Nokia was like so the number one in a in a in a in a mobile phone? My first mobile phone was a Nokia. Everybody had a Nokia. I meet so many people who used to work at Nokia <laughs> wow. here in Finland. I think I think Nokia's revenue at one point was like bigger than the national uh, the you call that GDP uh -huh. of of, the, of of Finland, and they missed the switch to the you know the smartphone, which is yeah. crazy when you think about it. Yes, think, because I, have the resources. How can you not yeah. be more on your you know research and development team? Yeah, but I believe it's it's what I don't know the the full story, uh, but I I think it's part of the answer is just what you said. Like they didn't let go of the past, you know. Or oh, think about Kodak. So true. This is so true. You have you have to let go let go of the past. And it's so hard. It's very difficult to let go of the past, especially when when you're letting go of an idea mm. of of an idea you had in your mind of of how things you know like how you envision something in your mind. That's really hard, in my opinion. I agree. So entrepreneurs, we're learning with you that entrepreneurs, they need to overcome their self-limitations, their bottlenecks. But entrepreneurs are also really good at being resilient. And I think you've got some great stories there, too. <laughs> I remember you told me about a flooding in Houston before COVID, actually. Can you tell yes. us that story? Well, that was in 2018. Yeah. That was another moment where I had to change my business model. So we used to service a lot of the small, small businesses where like restaurants, like uh, mom and pop shops and all of that. Kind of like every agency, how they start. So we had like, you know, 70 accounts. We had a lot of accounts. I had a lot of uh, employees and staff and all of that. And then when, Co when Harvey, it's the Hurricane Harvey hit right. Houston, like literally like 60% of my clients were literally underwater, closing doors or having to spend money on repair. So from one day to the next, 60% of my revenue was cut. And I had 15 people in my staff. So it was it was a big, big, big change. And of course, I went five months without paying me a salary. Mm. Like literally, like I was at one point even, okay, I'm going to apply for a job in the meantime now to see, you know, if this picks up because I was trying the same, but of course, everybody was trying to build their own business. Yeah. And my previous type of client were too small to be able to keep their marketing going. And that's when I realized, okay, I need to shift my model. I need to target you know, the bigger fish. And we we did that. And literally by the end of 2019, we doubled our revenue compared to 2018. Wow. So we not only made it, and within, you know, the six months that I have left from the year. Uh, so it was really, a, a, honestly, a true testament that that is really, you have to, I guess, let go of the past. Now I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I was about to say the same. Yes, but 
Yeah, because yeah. you know the way the way I saw it is, of course, you are in catastrophe like mode. Like I'm thinking, oh my god, you know, everybody's underwater. What do I do? What are the clients that were not as affected? So I did like a market research and study, and you know, shifted my business model. Yeah, you know, my my motto is this uh, quote from Albert Einstein: "Any big challenge lies uh, uh, an opportunity." Well, this is a, this is a great a great example. And sometimes we see those opportunities because we are up against the wall. We have no we have no choice. Yes. And I think in your case, this is this is what happened. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. I was be like applying for a job, then I would cry, then yeah. put myself together and be like, no, this strategy needs to work, and I would just start working on my strategy. I did that like three times, and that was it. Like, I kept working on because that. It's really hard to give up on, on, you know, something that you've worked so much. And I feel like as entrepreneurs, there's one point where you become almost unemployable. <laughs> my, not know. almost. No, no, not almost. You're not. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I can't see myself working for a company. like Because I always had that as my backup plan, as my plan B, worst case scenario, I can just go find a job. But really, like, even applying for a job in my head, it's like, no, like, I can I can dedicate these hours in this business. Like, when was the last time you applied for a job? 2018. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you did, you applied for jobs. Oh, you I did apply for three, three jobs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> did you go to the interviews? No. No, <laughs> I didn't do any of it. I just did it. Yeah. Well, what have you learned about yourself being an entrepreneur? I think, uh, I think being an entrepreneur, it makes me see life very differently. I see it a little bit more simple and it may sound kind of silly, but I see it as if you're playing a game, right? Like when we were mm -hmm. kids, you know, I don't know if you used to play, but you know, I used to play like, um, you know, like the little house and my brother was the grocery store and my other brother was right. this. So we would play this game and I feel like that's life, right? Like at the end of the day, you know, we're playing game. There's really nothing that can, like my business can go down, God forbid, but I'm still going to be here. Right? I'm still, uh, there's so the sun is going to come out tomorrow. There's still going to be another opportunity. So I don't see it. I think my level of resiliency is so high that I don't see that as um, as something that's going to stop me. Right? Like, if it's not this, then I will see it as, okay, well, that didn't work. Let's play another game. What can I be now? Or what's going to be next? And that's how I see it. So I, I see the whole world as a big playground, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I know exactly what, what you're saying. I've heard it. I've heard it before from from other entrepreneurs. Actually, actually, on this on this podcast. Yeah. Well, anything else? No, I think that's any other question. <laughs> no, anything else that you learn about yourself? I mean, oh, I mean, yes. Anything else that I've learned about myself? Yes. Well, obviously, yeah. I think resiliency is a big one. I think I'm very creative. Mm. And I, I, I've noticed that the way I perceive things, and this can be not only for my entrepreneurship life, but also because of what I went through when I was a kid. But I see life and perceive things uh, a little bit differently than the common uh, way people see things. And I think that's a, a result of just overcoming things so much that it's not that I minimize it, but I just try not to make it bigger than what they are i think everything yeah. has a solution yeah so i i think what you what you what you're saying is that you get more perspective on on things in general and where other sees challenge you just see everyday life <laughs> yes yes yeah. as as the uh, the fact that you can't you, you you come from bolivia has it impacted you you as an entrepreneur has it played any role I think so, yeah, because I saw both my parents being entrepreneurs. Yeah. And, you know, I had to run my mom's business when I was mm. 12. And then after that, I started another company, a branding company in Bolivia when I was like 19, 20, and which is still running that company over there. Yeah. So for me, it was when I moved to Houston, it was not a matter of, oh, should I start a business? It was kind of like, let me study the market and see when am I going to start my business, right? Or what kind of business I'm going to start. It was more like that. So you were born, you were born an entrepreneur. I think not. 
Yeah. So when I was a little kid, like I will like play, like I will tell my mom I was going to be the cleaning lady and I will literally go outside my door, ring the bell, kind of like, I'm going to run up and like play the whole role, <laughs> All, you know, and then just to make up extra cash and whatever. Like did it all really selling cookies to my neighbors, like everything. Yeah. So in twenty eighteen, this is the first time you were applying for a, a job. Then, no, no, no. I worked in, when I moved to Houston. I decided to work for a company. Okay. Because um, I wanted to really know the market. Mm. So I worked for a company, and I was a key account manager, running marketing campaigns to all the Walgreens, and you know, traveling all over Texas. It was a lot of fun. So I worked there for two, three years. And then after that, I think three years, yeah. After that, I launched Boral Agency. Yeah. And literally within months of having my company, I got a job offer to work for Hewlett Packard. And I was like, yeah. oh, my company, of course, I'm going to take it. So I took it. I hired a graphic designer for my agency. So that way I could work and have someone doing what I was doing. And uh, I worked for Hewlett Packard for two years. Yeah. And then I was kind of like, okay, I, you know, the itch is gone. I'm done. Work for anyone else. So work for corporate company. Think? Okay, let's come back. And then check it off. <laughs> done. Global campaign done. Like, because I was in charge of all Americas. It was really exciting. Right. right. So it's experience that you're able to use in your. In your, yeah. in your agency today. And I think it's important as an entrepreneur to experience that because when I'm talking to a client, a corporate account, I understand the hoops that they need to go through to either get a mm-hmm. post or, you know, who do we need to make happy within the organization first before we even hit the market. So it's really interesting, you know, how the bureaucracy works and mm-hmm. be able to have that experience uh, helps me navigate that with my client. Indeed. What's the uh, the dream for your business? Uh, we want to be a global company. Really, I want to be able to, you know, go to the UK or go to Finland and be able to see, you know, like an agency there, like a like a door of of my company there. What what needs to happen for you to be able to achieve that goal? Right now, I think the way it's funny how it happens because I had this idea where I needed to do it. Mm. But we're going to be adopting a little bit of the business model, kind of like a franchise, but we're not going to be a franchise. So something that it will allow us to partner up with other great marketers in other yeah. cities, other countries, and just follow the system. Because we our system really gets results for our clients. And we have, like we hear it from our customers all the time, whenever they work and they start working with us, the first thing they say is like, oh my God, I love your process. I love, because we are, we standardized it very well. Mm. It, uh, the questions that we ask our clients are extremely good. We, we, I think we pride ourselves on the questions that we ask because they're not the typical, oh, tell me what's your business about and then we copy paste. We're asking questions that are a little bit more in depth, like, you know, why are you doing this? Why do you want, like more trying to understand the meaning behind and then we also try to understand how their operation works. And we talk to their employees. Like we really go and work like a, like a fractional CMO mm-hmm. where we're working within the company to find that key differentiator that's going to make them stand out from the competition. And the fact that I run the business so and I have business experience, I think helps me bring that different uh, type of questions to my client. Mm-hmm. Where are you on that journey of going uh, I think, going, uh, global? I think that change right now that we are working on, it's uh, it's really going to take us closer to that. So hopefully by next year, we can start opening our next office. Yes, do you know Do you know the country? The first country? We're thinking UK as the first yeah. country. Just, just the language is easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's true. But you know, it's not in Europe anymore. <laughs> no. Well, I wish you, I wish you, uh, best of luck with uh, this sec- this expansion. Thank you. Uh, and, but this is my favorite question. I love asking questions myself. Mm-hmm. And if you take all your experience, 
and you summarize it into one practical recommendation for other entrepreneurs, what would it be? I think it will be to just follow your dream, right? Follow them and, and try to do it in a way that you're inspiring others, not just for uh, monetary gain. You have to be okay. No, no, no. You have to be. You have to be more specific. <laughs> what was what was your dream? What was the dream you followed? My dream is to inspire others to follow. Okay. That's my purpose in life, and um, I feel like I accomplished that through my company because when I'm working with a business owner, that's their dream, right? To launch. Mm-hmm company to launch this business idea or this product or whatever it is that we're working on. And I'm helping them bring that idea to life. And a lot of the, like whenever we're working together, a lot of the communications that we have is not so much about uh, how much is going to be your ad budget, but you know, who are you trying to reach? Why are you trying to do this? Um, Who do you want to connect? What change are you trying to make? Right, especially now, I feel like there's happening. There's a lot of change happening in the world, which uh, you know, decarbonization, like a lot of those uh, type of changes in the oil and gas industry, in the tech industry, a lot of tech companies solving issues, operational issues, optimizing efficiencies and stuff like that. And you know, it's really fun for me to be able to help my clients and. And also have meetings that are inspiring for both of us. It's not just transactional. Yeah, yeah. You're talking. You're talking about purpose and, and impact, which is which is one of the reasons why entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs because they want to they create impact like yourself. Uh, you want to uh, aspire people to follow their dreams. I want yeah. to. I want to empower people so they can thrive. You know, and that's that's. And like you said, it's it's going it goes beyond the monetary reward. I, I'll be happy to do that for free all day long. <laughs> but yeah. I I need I need you know to live also to make a living out of it. So I have to charge I have to charge for my services. But once you're able to do that, and you have fun, your purpose, I think it it's it's a game changer because yeah. it makes you so much happier. Do you agree? Yes, no, hundred percent. And for me. Like, I like helping my clients with that, but I also, my ultimate goal and the reason why I'm working on my agency so hard is because once I create a model that can be easily replicated, mm-hmm. I want to do the same to help nonprofits or okay. to fundraise money. And to be more specific, I want to help foster home or foster nonprofits that are helping the foster care community. Because um, that's obviously, you know, when I lost my mom and my dad was kind of like out of the picture, we were almost into into the system. Yeah. But fortunately, we were in Bolivia, so the whole thing was it was just a lot, right? But coming into this country, I'm grateful that I was not part of the system because when you find out all the issues that they're having and how broken it is and... You know, like all of that, uh, like all the troubles that the foster kids go through on top of what they already went through, it just breaks my heart, right? So my goal is to inspire those kids to really tell them, listen, just keep going. You're going to be fine. Follow your dreams. Because, you know, I made it. I made it up. Great. Thank you for for sharing uh, your time, uh, Patricia. I just have uh, one more question for you. How can people uh, contact you? They can find me online. Of course, they can either even Google my name. They'll find about my company. If they go to LinkedIn, just search for Patricia Boral or Boral Agency uh, on Facebook, literally all the platforms, or go to our website at boralagency.com. Excellent. Again, thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. And thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned something new about the entrepreneur bottleneck. You can go even further. Download my ebook, Eight Tactics to Thrive as an Entrepreneur, to tackle your bottlenecks head on and propel your business forward. You'll find it on my website and in the show notes below. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.